Hey, in this video we're going to be making a carbon fiber wall mounted gaming PC. A few months ago I got into PC gaming for the first time really in my life. There was a short stint when I was in my teens and I'd go over to my friend's house and play Unreal Tournament on his PC, but other than that I've really never done any PC gaming until this last summer. I started to get into it, it was fun trying to figure out how to assemble PCs. Uh, I built a really janky rig and now it's time to upgrade it to something really nice. And what I've wanted to do ever since I, I started this whole journey is I really wanted to make a carbon fiber PC chassis. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you some rapid prototyping techniques that I think will help you for, for quickly developing molds, for, for quick one-off projects. I hope this will be useful to you. I'm gonna walk you through the process as I'm showing you the footage of how I do it. So here's what we're gonna do. For starters, my mold surface is going to be 14 mil thick mylar. You may have seen me use this before on another tool, another project video. I really like this stuff. So in this case, I built up the general shape of what I wanted my PC to look like. And then I used the mylar as the tool surface going between all the surfaces that I was using to create my shape. I stuck it down with 3M77 and then I used some masking tape to hold the corners down where it was wanting to lift up just a little bit. After that, it's just like any other infusion. Your vacuum bag tape, put your fabric in the mold. I used four layers for this, which was probably a little less than I should have, but it worked out okay. And after peel ply and sealing it all up, it was time to infuse. Hold on just a second. Did you see that? Let's go back a little and see what happened there. I ran out of epoxy midway through my infusion. I thought to myself, I've seen somebody do this before and they still saved the layup. They clamped it before some bubbles could get into the tube, mixed up a fresh batch of epoxy, stuck the tube back in, and then continued with the infusion. It looked a lot easier than it actually was. I could not get all of the bubbles out of the tube, so when I started the infusion again, you guessed it, they went through the layup. I was worried I had ruined it, but there was only one thing I could do, which was wait and see how it turned out. In the meantime, I decided to go ahead and start building the PC portion of this build. Let's take a look at the components that I'm using for this build. This is a budget build, which for 2021, budget builds don't really exist. If you're familiar with the space, if you're in the hobby already, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Graphics cards are insanely expensive right now, but I did the best I could. I wanted a PC that would be able to handle 1440p gaming at medium-ish settings. It doesn't have to be high, ultra-high settings. I usually can't tell the difference anyway. So this would be solid for 1080p gaming. It would be good for 1440p if you're willing to turn some settings down. At least that's my goal. So for starters, the heart of the system, well, you could argue two things, but the heart of the system, I would say, is you start with the CPU. This is an i3 10100F. Now, you might be saying an i3 for a gaming PC, is that really enough? And the answer is yes. Uh, from all the research that I've done, this chip should do just fine. As I'm filming this, the, 12, the 12th generation Intel series are supposed to come out really, really soon. Um, by the time this video's out, they'll probably have launched. They might be a better choice, but I got this for 85 bucks. That's hard to beat. So uh, Intel i5 or i3, uh, I got a cooler for that, the Hyper 212 Evo. Uh, this is an older one that I actually got from a friend for free. Uh, so thank you to him for that. But you don't necessarily need a cooler for an i3. It'll just look a lot better than the stock cooler and I got it for free anyway. Uh, for power supply, I'm using EVGA 12, uh, 600, 600 watt bronze. And then of course, the one that's hardest to get, the Asus RX 6600. A lot of people poo poo on, on AMD cards. I gotta say, my old gaming PC, my really janky one that was built with like a 10 year old uh, Asus, or not Asus, 10 year old AMD card, it was a HD 7870. It was fine. The drivers were fine. I never had a single issue with it. And so I'm excited to see how it goes with this one. And unlike Nvidia cards, these are in stock. You can actually get these at around 450 bucks. So uh, this is what I'm using for my graphics card. For RAM, I'm using 16 gigabytes of silicon power DDR4 
RAM 3200 megahertz. And then for the motherboard, I'm using an MSI H410M Pro-C. How do they come up with the naming schemes for these motherboards? This is ridiculous. I mean, I, I swear the people that are in the naming department for motherboard manufacturers have been taking their lessons from Mercedes. It's a nonsensical string of numbers, so hard to remember. Just give it a name. Anyway, I digress. It's a micro ATX motherboard, which I chose for two reasons. One, it's small, and two, it's cheaper. So with that, let's get into the build. Now, why am I me? Shoot. Install processor before removing cover. Ah, ah, see? Yeah, there we go. Okay, everything's fine. Okay, so I've got the corner with the triangle. Why can't I tell where that goes? Okay. Oh, feels like I'm going to break something. I don't like that feeling. Okay, RAM is in. Let's see, how about that much? Oh, oh no, 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 stop, oh, oh, come on. And with that done, back to the carbon fiber. Definitely not perfect, but not terrible either. A little floppier than I meant. I might have to stiffen that up a little bit. We'll see. For trimming it, I used a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. This is my go-to for carbon fiber trimming. And then I clean up the edges with a sanding block. I laid everything out on the chassis to make sure I was comfortable with how it was all going to go together before I started drilling any holes in my chassis to mount stuff to. Alright, and for standoffs, to hold our motherboard, we're going to use these. These are T-nuts. We'll bond these to the carbon fiber um, coming through, and then we can screw the motherboard directly into these. There's number 632. I'll put a link in the description for these. Okay, so we've got the motherboard mounted. That's all assembled. Still have to mount the power supply and the graphics card. Now, I was really excited. I had a perfect plan for the graphics card. Stolen idea from Linus Tech Tips from one of his videos that I saw, which involved unthreading some of the screws that hold the back plate to the shroud, and then using those screw holes, just putting screws through it with standoffs to thread into that. Beautiful idea. I thought it was going to work great until I discovered that the screws used for this Asus graphics card are not something that anybody in the rest of the world is using. It took me some, some serious research to figure out what these things are. These are a British Association number 9 screw. As best as I can tell, that's what it is. I measure them with micrometers, I checked thread count, uh, the thread pitch, I, all that, and I tell, I'm telling you, it is a British Association number 9 screw. Who in the world is using that? I do not know. I don't think even the British are. Anyway, um, I can't get those screws. I can't seem to find them anywhere. I found nothing that seems to fit. It's definitely not a number 256. It's definitely not a 1mm or a 2mm. So my, that, that's the best I can figure out is that's what it is. So I'm going to try and figure out a different way to mount that. Um, we'll see about that. But for the power supply... I want to have just a 90 degree right angle bracket that screws into the top and is bonded to my back plate. 
Um, so tonight we're going to make that. We're going to make the 90 degree bracket and we're going to bond that in place, screw it all together and everything should be hunky dory. Let's get to it. To make this bracket I used the exact same technique as I used for the chassis using 3M77 to stick a 14mm Mylar to an MDF shape that I had created. And then I used that as my layup tool for laying up the carbon fiber bracket. For this I believe I used 8 plies. I wanted it to be a lot more stout than the chassis because this is what's holding the heaviest component, the power supply. And to locate the holes on my bracket, I placed some tape over my power supply, poked a hole through the tape at the holes where I was going to mount it to, peeled that tape off, stuck it onto my bracket, and then I had a guide to show me exactly where to drill my holes so that it would match up perfectly with the power supply afterward. Also, notice how much easier it is to drill through the carbon with this reamer than it was with those jobber bits. Man, I gotta get more of these. And I just used a larger drill bit to deburr the holes. And then the last thing that I did was I drilled holes in several places that were going to be hidden so that I could put zip ties through them to use for cable management later. Now the two issues left to solve are how to mount the graphics card and how to mount the, how to mount the entire computer to the wall. Uh, so for the graphics card I tried so hard to find the right screws, to find some standoffs that I could use, could not find anything. So I've resorted to using double sided sticky tape to hold it on here. Um, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be a secure solution, however long term I'd still like to have it hard mounted with, with standoffs. So I'm going to keep looking for those, hopefully I can find some and this will only be a temporary solution, um, but I think it's pretty safe. I gotta stop one more time right here. Remember that adhesives tend to soften as they get warm, and what does a graphics card do? It gets kind of warm. So what happened? Well. You can probably figure that out. Thankfully it wasn't catastrophic, but I did have to go back and remount this using a better method. Now the other thing, mounting it to the wall, just got some drywall anchors. Uh, at first I was kind of concerned about having to make sure it goes into a stud, uh, but it, I did a little bit of looking and these are 35 pounds each as their holding capacity. The entire computer is going to weigh far less than 35 pounds, so I'm pretty sure we should be safe with just these drywall anchors with black screws, should look clean. And then I'm going to be ready for a final installation and putting it on the wall. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. And with the PC complete and installed, I think it's time for a montage, along with some sweet, sweet elevator music.
All right, so let's test it out, see how it does. Power. Oh, wait. Now power. Aha, okay. So for my peripherals, I've gone all wireless on everything. Uh, just an inexpensive Logitech uh, mouse and keyboard wireless that's plugged into there. Um, I'm gonna go with wireless Xbox controller. I'll throw a link in the description for my Bluetooth connector that I'm using for the uh, Xbox controller. So let's just try a couple games. All right, so for starters, we'll, we'll launch into Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, this is, I've got it at 1440p. Uh, graphic settings, it's all ultra except for motion blur is off and let's we'll see how it does with this RX 6600. Loading, loading, loading. Ah. Yeah, render scale. Let's just drop that to 80% and see how that does. And with that, we're solidly above 60 frames per second. Yeah, we're 64, 65, 67. So, all right, let's try a different game. All right, so we've launched into a uh, Halo Infinite now. Um, we're rendering at 1440p, and I've got it on high settings, and we're getting about 60 to 70 frames per second right now. I'll see if that keeps up. Yeah, we're getting about 70 frames per second. Just out of curiosity, I want to see what's going to happen. Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. Sorry, people. Sorry, team. I just died. Let's just see. 1080p jumps up to 85 frames per second. 80, 85. Again, that's that's pretty solid. And this is on high settings. Like, for you, I don't know you, but for me, I can't tell the difference between high settings and ultra settings. I just can't. That was not in any way, shape, for, or form a headshot. All right, so there you have it. Uh, one other thing I want to mention that I really appreciate is that this thing is dead silent. It's absolutely quiet. I can't hear this computer at all. Uh, even when the fans never even got very high, the, and the, the temperature is sitting at 50 degrees Celsius. So staying nice and cool, the, the CPU is actually at 35 degrees Celsius, so that cooler is doing its job. It's huge, it's a behemoth, but it's doing its job. So again, links to everything in the description. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and throw a like, uh, share it if you'd like to, and if you're enjoying the content from this channel, hit that subscribe button so you get notified when you get more stuff coming in. Uh, thank you for being here. I really enjoyed being, making this project. I enjoyed having you here, and I'll see you on the next video.